Hello everybody, um, I thought I'd put together a little Lightroom video and work on this image to show you how the new masking uh, tools work in uh, Lightroom Classic CC, which is what it's now called after the big update. Uh, if you have Lightroom installed on a computer, um, you have the subscription and you are installed on a computer, then it's Lightroom Classic CC. Um, what they have now is they kind of split it off and they have Lightroom CC which is only works in the cloud and it's I believe it's browser based and it's kind of like Lightroom Lite it doesn't have a lot of the um, the tools and develop and some of the filtering stuff and the, and the library it's very kind of limited so you want to stick to the desktop app right now because um, they did this because they are discontinuing Lightroom 6 as of December you won't be able to buy it as a standalone product and you'll have to get it through the Adobe subscription so let me show you a, um, a new uh, thing that they added here with uh, masking. Now you know uh, masking is, I'll hit O here so you can see what I'm doing. Oh wait, it's already on. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's my mask, right? So I've painted here and this is what is, anything that's red is going to be affected, okay? Uh, I'm masking it. I'm asking, putting a mask on it so I can affect just those areas. So what they've made now is they've uh, given you the ability to uh, refine your mask by luminosity or color. So you'll see this down here. It says mask range down here, which is off currently because they don't have any kind of mask on. And this works with the graduated filter, the radio filter, and the brush tool. So if I click one of those uh, on. And then let's say I use my auto mask. Let, let me let me do the uh, graduated filter first. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to select just the buildings. Okay. So I it's covered everything. That's a pretty uh, generic mask. So now what I can do is, you notice this is now highlighted, and I click on it, and it's got three settings: off, color, and luminance. Now what the color does, um, you select your color and it puts the mask on there. But in this case, I want to go by luminosity because the sky is much brighter than the buildings and I can block out the sky and just work on the buildings fairly easy because we've got high, uh, light mid-tones and mid-tones here, right? So if I go down to luminance, I put it on luminance and then I have my range mask here, I can start saying, take it off of highlight parts, right? And it starts to reduce everything it's not really working so well right but if I grab the other side and I say just take out just mask the darker parts and then it it works a lot better and I just get the buildings okay and then I can use I can zoom here and use the smoothness tool to help me refine I'll put it on zero you can see so it kinda doesn't get the outer surface of the window of the buildings but just the the uh, the windows, the darker parts. And if I drag this out, I can increase that a little bit more, right? Increase that a little bit more and get more of the buildings like this. But you can see down here, I'm, I'm starting to get some sky there. So what I could do is adjust my smoothness tool, use the smoothness tool, and that'll smooth out those edges. And you just have to find what works for your image. Zoom out again, and that's that. Look, that's looking pretty good for the buildings, right? and I could bring this up and get it off the, the greenery there. And speaking of greenery, I'm going to make a, a new graduated filter. I'm going to drag it up from the bottom and I'm going to show you how it works with color. Okay, so I've got this mask, uh, let's put it right about there. And I'm going to go to the mask range and click color. And then you'll see now you get the, another dialog here. Uh, you use the color range selector, which is this eyedropper and then you clicked on the, the color that you want to mask out. In this case, it's the greened tree, so I will click on the greened trees. Let me, let me bring it up a little bit more so you can see dramatically. So I'll put on the buildings, and then I'll grab the eyedropper, and I'll click there. Now you see it's taken a lot off the buildings. And I'll click around until I find the, the most green. Well, that looks pretty good, right? But you see how here it's missed some green. So what I could do is I get the eyedropper tool, I hold down shift, and my cursor changes, and now I have a plus mark next to my eyedropper. And then I hold down shift, and I click on that green, and it adds it to the mask. 
pretty cool. All right, and then I can use my amount slider to get it off the buildings, right? So getting it off the buildings, and then you'll see some green came back uh, out out of the mass. So I'll grab my eyedropper again and hold down shift and try to add that again. There we go. It's a little bit. Oh, that's that's pretty good mask, right? So now if I hit O and turn off my mask so it's not revealed, you can see that I can do my clarity or exposure and everything just on the trees here. Yeah, so it's a pretty good mask. And then I could click on this one here, my luminosity mask, and adjust just the buildings. All right, so there we go. All right, so that's how those work. Uh, let me show you another example. Uh, let's filter this with hello. Here we go. Now, um, here we got some solid colors. Yeah, I got yellow and green. So, I mean, obviously, I want to use the color mask, right? So, uh, let me show you. I don't know if you've ever used auto mask before. I've ever explained it, but auto mask. You turn that on, it will automatically find edges, right? It tries to guess what you're masking. So, if I paint here. like so it just does the yellow yeah it tries to do just the yellow you can see right there on that edge there it doesn't go to the green so much it's automatically just trying to do the yellow but it's not doing a, a terribly sophisticated job of it you can see here and here it's went into the green a little bit right Let me zoom out and I'll paint this whole thing right and that's like oh, okay what a messy mask now here's where the new tool comes in handy. Now I'll go to color, right? I'll get my eyedropper and I'll say just the yellow and I'll click on the yellow and boom, it takes it out of the green. And then I can hold down shift and add another pattern of yellow. And there you go. Um, I could add that. This yellow here doesn't seem, okay, it doesn't want to add that. Let me go back. That's seeing, it's seeing that as a little bit of green. So then I just adjust the amount. And there we go. Now I suppose I could go back in here and just brush that in. Um, I don't really want to do that because of that sloppy and that defeats the purpose. But if we kind of there we go. Well, it's, I suppose that's as good as I'm going to get it. But I can always try to add another drop of yellow with the uh, with the tool here. Doesn't seem to want to add that yellow, seeing as a lot of green. And take off the auto mask. And then do his adjustments, and that, that's pretty good. Alright, so then I could turn off my mask overlay and work with my color saturation or whatever. Yeah, so that's how you mask that. What would be a nice feature in the future would be to invert the mask. Um, but they haven't implemented that yet. I'm sure it's coming on an update because it seems like the obvious. Um, evolution in uh, Lightroom masking. Um, that's about it really. Uh, we could try I'll show you how to get sky. Let's um, let's get this image up. Let me do one more thing. I know I said that's about it but let's try the uh, graduated filter mask. Okay so now I have I have my mask on so it's revealed so you can see it. Then I'll go to luminosity and I've get oh luminosity not color and then I'll say take it off the shadow areas see it's now it's coming off of the buildings you can get it like that and then you can adjust your your smoothness I always I would always uh, try to add some smoothness adjustment because it's it's kind of like a you kind of finessing it between the two sliders, right? The range and smoothness, and this goes for color also. You've got to use smoothness to kind of fine tune the mask. So I'll turn the, uh, hide the mask there and, you know, just work on exposure or clarity. And it's just in the sky parts now. All right, um, I hope you found that useful. Just a really quick video on the new features in Lightroom Classic um, range masking. Thanks for watching. Um, got any comments? 
uh, let me know uh, in the in the thread, and I will uh, answer all your questions. Okay. Cheers. Bye bye.